So now let's break down the performance of Quicksort. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. Um, and so we need to think a lot about the input dependence of Quicksort because the best and worst cases for this algorithm are quite different. Okay. So let's talk through the best case uh, scenario first. So given an array of size A, in the best case, what happens is the pivot divides the array evenly at every step. So the pivot value that I choose when I'm uh, uh, partitioning the array of size eight divides it into roughly two subarrays of size four. Now I know that one's three and one's four, but just humor me, right? Then when I partition the array of size four, it divides them into roughly size two um, and, and so on. In that model, if that's the case, then we can return to the uh, sort of performance analysis we did for merge sort because it works the same way. So I do one ON partition of an array of size eight and two arrays of size four, two ON partitions of arrays of size four into arrays of size two, and then one final step at the bottom. Now, again, I know that, you know, the pivot's ending up in the right spot, and so the arrays are getting a little smaller in ways that are frustrating for this type of analysis, but it's close enough, right? And the idea is, how many partitions did I do? We know the partition is ON in the size of the entire array, so that's the same for merge sort. How many partitions did I do? I did three. What's three? Log base two of eight. Um, and again, if I add one level here, let's say I do 16. Well, I do one uh, ON partition into eight, then down to four, then down to two, then down to one, so that's four, right? So the partitions are N, there are log N of them in the best case. This is all assuming that my pivot value splits the array evenly into two parts. What happens if it doesn't? Ah, okay, glad you asked. Worst case performance for Quicksort. Now in the worst case, the pivot value does not partition the array at all. By accident, I pick the minimum or maximum value at every step. Now this can happen by accident, but it can also happen in certain cases if we're not careful um, with real data. But imagine that rather than choosing a value that divides the array evenly, I choose a value that's either the biggest or the smallest value. So essentially, I partition the array, but all the values end up on one side of the pivot value. So now let's think about how this works. So my first ON partition only gives me an array of size 7 to work with, and then size 6, 5, 4, 3, and so on. So rather than the arrays going from ON to N over 2 to N over 4 to N over 8, now they're going from ON to N minus 1, N minus 2 to N minus 2. So this is not good. Um, this will cause me to have to do a lot of partitions. Every partition is ON, and if I have to do N of them to get from N all the way down to, to zero, now I'm N squared, right? And so this is not good. This is, this is the, you know, the, the, the wildness in quicksort that we worry about, right? It's unpredictable. Merge sort is, mm, there's none of this. Merge sort is like solid, you know? It works the same way, it does not care what's in the array. Um, it's going to give me O and log in every single time. Quicksort will do that sometimes um, if the pivot values are properly chosen, but if they're not, this can happen, right? And, and the problem here is that, you know, you know again, I'll, here's a visual explanation of what's going on here. Here's what I, I want to show you about this too. Look at this array. What's true about this array? It's already sorted, right? So that's actually a lot of order to this array already. And so one of the things that's troubling about Quicksort is uh, you might think, oh, well, the worst case won't happen that often, but for certain quicksort implementations, the worst case is an already sorted array. Maybe it's sorted in the wrong direction, or maybe it's almost sorted and there's a few values that are out of place. But it's actually pretty common in, in programs to sort data that's already largely sorted, right? Like I just added a few more values to something and then I need to sort them again, but I sorted them a minute ago. I'm just trying to maintain things, right? Sometimes the way we maintain stuff in an array uh, in a sorted fashion is we sort the array and then we add a few new items and we sort the array again. So in that situation, most of the array is sorted and I have a couple new values that I need to find the right spot for. Um, and if given sorted data, quick sort produces this really poor performance, that's a problem. Um, and so in this case, given an array that's sorted in reverse order, you'll see that quick sort that chooses the first value as the, uh, the pivot is not making very much progress. I've done four partitions and I still have an array of size four to work on. So how do I avoid this? So essentially, if you start reading about quicksort, and you can uh, go do your own research about this, 
Um, the goal here starts to become, how do I avoid choosing bad pivot values? Um, and there's some choices of pivot value, like the first value or the last value, that are just bad in general. We know that they don't work very well because there are certain inputs that cause them to perform very poorly. However, um, so there's an interesting, so again, the first value fails in certain cases, last value fails in other cases. Um, a better idea is to choose a random value or the median of a small number of values. Now you might wonder, you know, there's, there's this obvious thing here, which is like, if I want a value that sorts the, that splits the array evenly, why not choose the median value from the items in the array? And that's like a fantastic idea. It's brilliant. Except, what do you need to do given a data set to find the median value? You have to sort the data. Oh, oh too bad. Yeah, so that doesn't work because we can't sort the data. But what some quick sort implementations do is they sort of sample the data. Like, let's say I have a big array with 32 values in it, I might take the first three values and cross my fingers that they're representative of the rest of the data and take their median, because I can do that pretty easily. It's just finding, you know, the sorting three values. I can do that with a little piece of imperative code, find the median of those and hope that it's similar to the median of the entire set. But I can't find the median of the entire set without sorting, which is the exact thing I'm trying to do. Picking a random value works better than picking first or last because it doesn't fail in these common cases where the data is already sorted or mostly sorted or sorted in the wrong direction, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, essentially quick sort performance ends up becoming very sensitive to the choice of pivot value and very sensitive to the data that I'm using. If I'm sorting random data, I could probably get away with choosing the first or the last uh, value as the pivot, but that's usually not what we're doing. Um, all right, so now let's go through our, our, our uh, table for quick sort, right? Um, and so what we see here is that, uh, you know, time complexity for quick sort, best case is O log N, worst case is O N squared. Uh, and, and, you know, average case here really depends a lot on the data, right? But if you look at, you know, the numbers that are out there in most, um, in most tables, it's O N log N. Um, because good quick sort implementations will, will avoid most cases where they would choose pathological uh, values for pivots. Space is something that we'll talk about uh, when we compare sorting algorithms together. But one of the things that's desirable about quick sort, you might think like, why not just use merge sort and always get O n log n performance? Quick sort actually uses a lot less memory because merge sort really kind of needs, an, if, if, to, to merge, uh, to sort an array of size n, merge sort really needs like O n scratch space to work in, right? You can think of it as like building an entirely separate array and, uh, away array and moving the values from the array into it, but it needs that space to work in. Quicksort, on the other hand, doesn't, right? It can work inside the array it's given. Now you might ask like, why isn't it just constant time? Well, it's recursive. And so every call to quicksort is using some space, uh, has some, for so temporary variables like the pivot location. And so that's where that O and uh, log n comes from, is that there's log n calls to quicksort that will run before that last one gets to the bottom and finishes the partitioning process on the small arrays. Cool, okay, quick sort, wild child of sorting algorithms, uh, really fun to think about and talk about.